Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So a cold start is the additional time it takes for a service to respond to a request when it's the first request that service has ever received. Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. We're gonna take a quick look at why cold starts happen, kind of where the problem is, and then we're gonna have a look at how Cloudflare manages to remove the problem completely and achieve zero millisecond cold starts. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So cold starts have you know been around forever but they just haven't really been as much of a problem as they are today. And what this comes down to is essentially the number of times uh, we deploy an application or a service. So if you think about historically, uh, you know, uh, an old school um, infrastructure setup, you might have a long lived server and you might deploy to that server once every two weeks. And if you think about what a cold start is, well, when you deploy an application or a, a server environment, um, it's not necessary that everything gets initialized when you start the application or when you you know start up the, the service. Sometimes some things are, are lazy loaded uh, or initialized later on, and that's where the cold starts comes in. So if you think about uh, a typical kind of request flow, um, a request comes in, and let's assume it's the very first time that this service has ever received a request. It might have to do things like um, initialize objects, and it might need to load code or modules, apply settings, populate cache, wherever it is and then it can deal with the request uh, and respond. Whereas every subsequent request after that one can basically skip all those initial few steps and just deal with the request directly. So if you're deploying once every two weeks, it's not really much of an issue because barely anyone's ever gonna see it. But if you are worried about the one request that sees it, you can just send your own warm-up request every time you spin up or deploy the new service. And that way you are the one that sees the slow loading time or the cold start and nobody else sees it. But of course, nowadays it's not quite as simple as that because there are a lot of scenarios where you may be spinning up new environments for almost every request that comes in. And the obvious question is, hey, why don't we just have long lived servers everywhere? And there's a few good reasons why not to. Um, cost is one of them. You don't want to have servers up all the time, especially if you're not using them. Um, and that kind of ties into auto scaling. So you might want to have only the servers that um, can handle the amount of requests or the load that you need. And then there may be certain times in the day, week, month, year that um, those loads spike up and therefore you introduce requests on kind of a uh, a need to have basis. So what kind of impact are we really talking about here? So I've got a graph that I'll, I'll show on the screen just now. Um, and this is an example that I've taken from a blog, which I'll link in the description below. And this shows the typical cold start ranges within AWS Lambda. The darker parts here are 67% um, of the durations and the lighter parts here cover 95% of the duration. So you can see here for most languages, we're dealing with anywhere from um, a couple of hundred set milliseconds up to four or 500 milliseconds, um, which is significant in itself. But then you can have a look at things like Docker. So if we're spinning up a new Docker instance, obviously that's a bit heavier than just, you know, serverless functions. Um, even though it's lighter than a you know, full server environment, you can see that that takes anywhere up to a full second, which if you have um, high performance requirements for your APIs or for your services uh, or web applications, then this is really adding quite a fair bit onto the uh, response time. So now that we understand a bit more about um, cold starts and what the issue is, let's have a look at um, Cloudflare and how they solve this issue. So if you're not familiar with Cloudflare, Cloudflare is essentially a, it's a global network. So they have physically have nodes um, placed all around the world and they basically let you um, build applications, services, caches, et cetera, on top of those nodes. And therefore your, your code is you know, near the user and distributed across the whole world. And in theory, you're reducing a lot of latency and getting high speeds. Uh, that's basically, you know, that's one of their, their core uh, functions as a company. And one of their services, Cloudflare Workers, is essentially serverless functions. Um, but again, it uses the, the network that's, uh, that powers Cloudflare. So Cloudflare Workers are built on top of Google's V8 engine. And you might be familiar with uh, the V8 engine. It's the same engine that powers things like Chrome um, and other browsers, as well as Deno and Node.js. So Cloudflare essentially went and built their own runtime instead of using things like Node and, and Deno, and they implement the exact same or a lot of the same uh, web API, so it feels very kind of familiar. But the, the key thing here is because they implement their own runtime, that means they can use the V8 engine uh, basically to, to their advantage. So one of the features that V8 has is something called an isolate, or it might be an isolate. I'm going to call them isolates. And an isolate is a lightweight context that can basically execute your code within an isolated environment. So it has its own little memory and it can execute your function and variables uh, protected from the rest of the environment. So uh, conceptually, it's very similar to kind of threads and um, thread context. And 
The important thing here is that within one V8 environment, you can spin up hundreds, if not thousands of isolates, and you can kind of switch between them and run them all together. And of course, because it's not spinning up a whole new entire environment, this is very, very quick. And this basically is the reason that um, Cloudflare can achieve those speeds. So if we take a step back and look at this in context, if we're dealing with serverless functions um, with Node.js, which I know a lot of people are nowadays, every time a request comes in, you might need to spin up an entire Node.js environment, which is, uh, you know, it's got the V8 uh, environment uh, within that. And then you, you know, the load the code, you handle the request and you send the response. And then the next request comes in and you need to handle that overhead of the V8 engine and the you know, Node.js environment again before dealing with the code, so on and so forth. Whereas if you look at the Cloudflare model, what they do is they spin up this V8 environment once and then every request that comes in, all we need to do is create a new isolate, which is very quick, you know, very similar to just adding a new thread. And that's the one that executes the code responds and then we can do that again and again and again of course down the line you might want to spin up a new uh, engine but you might just have a pool of those ready uh, anyways and there you have it that's how cloudflare managed to essentially remove the cold starts from their serverless functions so i think that's everything i wanted to cover in this video i hope you found it interesting um thank you very much for watching have a good day and i will see you in the next one